Hello, my dear Photoshop magicians. How are you? Today I will show you the art process behind this artwork. So first of all, when you look here, as you can see, we have here really beautiful, nice colors, some bluish colors in the background, C is green. Secondly, we have here this hand, which we obviously need to add ourselves because the image doesn't include them. It's going to look like, like there are thousands of people in the sea just waving their hands. We'll have to animate the hands to go to the left and right. We also have to animate the sea if you look here. The sea is also moving a little bit just to give it some, you know, liquid effect like it's real. And obviously we have glitch here on the goal and then the goal disappears. Wait, here, as you can see, the goal disappears, which means we'll have to replace the background. And uh, also then we have glitch on the hand where also the hand disappear. Wow, magical. We'll use three apps. This is not three. We'll use three apps. <laughs> For this art talk, first of all, we're going to use Photoshop to prepare our files. Then we will use an app called um, MovePick, I think, which is actually a mobile app. That is the app that we're going to use to animate the water, basically. And uh, then we're going to use After Effects to add the hands animation, glitch animation, and all the other uh, crazy stuff. And even if you're not familiar with some of these apps, it doesn't really matter because I will show you the general process behind. So this is going to be enjoyable and interesting to watch how it was created. Wow. So this is the original image, as you can see, it's already a very, very beautiful image. And if you go to my Instagram, you will see I tagged the photographer as well, so you can see who made the image. So in order to edit the colors, I went to camera raw filter. And uh, as you can see, what I did here is, if you look, I made the oranges actually pinky. And as you can see it here, as here I did it uh, red, I made them pinky. And also I made the blues really, really science. That, that was the colors I see originally, and that's what I did. I just thought I like these colors more pink and green, like some kind of magical colors. Next I had to add the hand, and I found this image of the hand, which is actually much bigger. Okay, so this is the original image, as you can see. And uh, obviously I did, uh, you know, create a mask to cut the background. Afterward, I had to apply many, many different filters, you know, hue saturation, Gaussian blue, and all that stuff in order to make sure that it's going to match our first image. I had to play with the, you know, lighting and call and shadows myself. So for example, if you look here, as you can see, it's pretty flat, but then I added some shadows here, darker, here I made brighter and so on. Oh, I did all of this to make sure that this is uh, closer to this hand, basically. And as you can see, it's even also blurry, just as blurry as this here. So if you look, it's, okay, maybe a little bit more, but still, it's also blurry. So because the image itself is a little bit blurry, it's not perfectly sharp. That's why all the objects that we add to the image also need to be blurry. Next step was to, you know, delete the goal basically. And the way I did it is actually very, very simple. I basically uh, made the selection of the goal and then went to edit, content aware, fill. And uh, this basically helps you to automatically fill the selected space. And uh, that's what I got basically. Mwah. I will use this when I need to make the goal and disappear. And then we have here some halo, but I'm not going to show how this was created because I have thousands of tutorials for this. This is the easiest thing that we need to do in this tutorial. So it's basically just a yellow ellipse with some outer glow effect and Gaussian blur. Boom, boom. And obviously I had to put it behind. So here as you can see, I have actually a separate layer where I have only the goal. And as you can see, it's uh, in the front. The reason why I had to do this is because in the animation, I will have to put the hands behind the goal. And that's why in order for the hands to be behind, I need to make sure I have this girl here in the front so that I can put her on top of the hands and the hands look like they're behind. So now when we have all of this, I will actually take this image and go to the app. So this app I use, it's called uh, MovePeak. And uh, as you can see, this is my project here. And let me explain you what I did here. First of all, as you can see, when I click play, if you look, as you can see, the C is actually moving, which is pretty cool. And uh, the way it's done is very, very simply, my dear friend Titas. So let me actually uh, remove everything here, just to show you this to you. So you just click on the path and like this you can, for example, draw a path uh, where the C is going to move. So let me click play, this path, this path, this path, this path and so on. And as you can see, we have too many moving parts. We don't want the goal to move. And that's why we can also click on anchor, which helps us to click, click, click. And like this we can actually stop certain places from moving. And uh, it looks pretty dope when I do that, as you can see. Boom, and now the girl is not moving anymore and only the water is moving. We also have here speed, which helps us to make it very slow, very fast. 
this is the fastest option that I have here right now. And uh, then if you go to effects, and if you look here, I also have here pretty cool animation in the background. Let me show you how it was done. And in effects, you can actually go to sky. And let me just click none. As you can see, there is no sky animation right now. But if I click on one of these presets, it's going to add animation. And then I can basically control how strong it's going to be, how good it's going to blend with the background. And that's the settings that I did. It's very soft and it's blending pretty well with the background right now. We also have here water animation which basically helps you to make the water more realistic. So for example, if I click none, uh, if you look here, if I click none, as you can see, now the water is just going to the left. But if I choose one of these uh, presets, and uh, let's see, okay, which one is the craziest one to be visible. Okay, as you can see right here, if you look at this one, the water is now very and very different. Uh, I chose here, I don't remember which preset exactly, but you have to just, you know, go through them to see which one you like more. It's not a big difference, but it's a slight difference which makes things look really nice. And uh, that's basically it. Now you just need to export and uh, save this, you know, original, cro original crop with the quality HD, duration, as much as you want and blah, blah, blah. So now it's finally time to move to the biggest pain of our life. To After Effects. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's not that painful. Well, if you know how it works. If you don't, then it's going to be very painful for your eyes, my dear friend. See that? But before we do that, before we start that enjoyful, enjoyful, joyful process, let me remind you that if you want to master Photoshop and After Effects, you can go to learnfromfred.com. Wow, here I have many cool classes that will help you master Photoshop. You know, learn how to create 3D stuff in Photoshop learn how to create cool animations in Photoshop, learn how to create glitch artworks, and also that will help you how to work with After Effects, transfer your artworks from Photoshop to After Effects, and actually animate them in After Effects, creating some really creepy stuff. Or if you're just a beginner, you know, you just want to learn Photoshop from zero and After Effects from zero. I also have class for that, obviously, my dear friend. So for example, if you go to the uh, learnfromfred.com homepage, basically, it was going to ask you, want to master Photoshop? And you're going to say, yes, I want to master Photoshop, obviously. Then you need to choose your path and you have your beginner, intermediate, or for professionals. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, if you choose beginner, I will show you which classes you should take. Obviously, first one is image editing, master Photoshop from zero to pro. Uh, then you're going to learn animations, which is going to help you to start animating stuff in Photoshop, which is just mind blowing. And then you're going to learn 3D in Photoshop, which will help you to master 3D features of Photoshop. You can access all the classes on the website for just $9 for your first month, which is a 50% discount. Or you can go to all classes and get the classes separately, get the class that you want. I also have here a section dedicated to students to show what my students were able to create after completing the lessons. And if you ever have any questions, I'm always here to help. I'm gonna give you personal help, so that means you can just email me, message me, and I will be there to answer all of your questions. If you're still not sure, just watch this video. It explains everything in details, how this works, what classes are there, and so much more. Love you, my dear friends. Let's now go to After Effects. So here we are in After Effects, and uh, let me explain everything step by step. So first of all, you can see I had to add here hands, and uh, they were added separately, you know, every hand is separate. And obviously I also have hands in the background. And uh, let me see, where are they? Here, as you can see, all of these hands are also separate. These are the ones that are in the background, basically um, behind her. And uh, the way I animated them, you know, to move to the left and right is actually very simple. I used a tool called Puppet Pin Tool. And uh, this tool basically helps you to create uh, this type of points on your object, on an image. And then using this point, you can just click and drag to animate your image and it looks very realistic. So it's pretty cool. So in addition for the hands in the background, I actually had to add Gaussian blur effect. So for example, if I click on this hand and uh, you will see that in the effect, I have the puppet effect, which helps to animate it go left and right. But also I have Gaussian blue, which just makes it blurry. And as you can see, I have here 4% blurriness. If I just zoom in, you can see it. It's uh, actually, making it even blurrier than it was. And the reason why that is because the further the image, uh, basically the further the hand, the blurrier it needs to get. As you can see here, we already have 10%, 18% blurriness. And if I turn this off and on, big difference. And uh, it's the same here. If you look here, you see, the hands in the background are blurrier than the hands in the foreground, which is just basic logic. Come on, guys. No whiskey left. I drank everything. So, so as you can see, everything is looking pretty cool. And uh, now let's go to the glitchy effect, okay? 
So uh, for the glitchy effect, so basically what I did, I have here a glitchy video, which just, you know, it's just a glitchy video that is doing glitchy stuff. And what I had to do is, I need to make sure that the glitchy video is going to be only on the go. And for that, I actually have here uh, the girl cut out. As you can see, it's only the girl. And here in After Effects, I can actually... So you know how in Photoshop we can use masks to show uh, different effects or objects only in specific places? In After Effects, we can do the same with the video. So for example, here, I can tell After Effects, you know, to use this uh, layer, basically the girl, to use the girl as a mask. So for example, if I just do this, boom, as you can see now, the video is going to be only um, where the girl is. So for example, if I play it, as you can see, it's not going outside the girl image. So here, you see this is the image and that's how where the video is. And that's pretty cool. That means because I can apply the glitch effect anywhere I want on my animation. So that's basically how it's done. But also another thing is that here I have, I have actually two glitch effects. And uh, the reason why I did it is because the first one is here. As that's, uh, uh, it's just, uh, you know, different squares. And the second one is actually more colorful. It's greenish, bluish, and all the other glitchy colors. And when I combine them, I get a boom effect. Okay, I should not really say that. That sounded stupid, but yeah, forget this. So anyway, after that, I just need to make sure that the girl disappears, boom. And uh, how you do that? So the problem here is that if this was just an image, it would be easy to make the girl disappear, you know? You just, we would just use the overlay that I created in Photoshop, you remember? Okay, this one. So I would just use this overlay, put it on the girl, and the girl would disappear, basically. But here the problem is that this part, basically is the C, and the background are actually animated. And when the girl disappears, I need to make sure the animation is still there, which is kind of, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna animate the back of the girl. And then, uh, after thinking for a long time, I figured how I can do it. It's not perfect, but it works. So here I have the animation, for example, right? And I need to make sure that the behind the girl is also animated, this part. So what I did basically is I cut this part of the video and then I just pushed it to the right. I know it's genius, right? So in other words, if you look here, uh, let me just, you know, if I delete the mask so that you can see what's actually going on here. Boom, boom. As you can see, this is the uh, video and I just cut this part and I put it behind the girl. So again, this part, I just put it to the left behind the girl when I remove the girl. And uh, it worked. It's pretty simple, right? And also, of course, I had to make the edges very, very smooth so that they can blend with the other parts. And it's not perfect. Like, for example, if you look here right now, uh, wait, where is it? Here. You can see that there are some edges here, you know, it's not perfect, but it works when I, I make it, when I animate it. It's also animated. And uh, especially if you consider that the girl is gone only for half a second, it's not going to be visible unless you just stop and look at it, really. So, and I know I could make it better, you know, and um, there are many other ways to do this, but honestly, I was just too lazy to make it perfect. So I was like, no one's gonna notice, right? Unless I tell you, so don't tell anyone else. So anyway, and the next step is the C. For the C, I did the same thing. Basically, I just took this part of the C and I just moved it to the left. So behind the girl is also animated and uh, where is it? Oh, okay, it's here. So that's basically, uh, as you can see, uh, the animation. And if I just delete the mask, you will see what's happening here. So as you can see, this is the video. I just put it to the left and then I just cut uh, this part of the video so that I don't see anything else. So, and uh, boom, I just cut it using mask, just like in Photoshop. And then if I play it, as you can see, it's still animated and mwah. And now lastly, for the glitchiness of the hands, where is it? For the glitchiness of the hands, I basically applied uh, the same technique that I did for the glitchiness of the girl. It's uh, basically just glitch animation. So if I just show this to you, glitch animation. And, uh, but I use hands as a mask for them. And when I do that, as you can see, the glitch animation is going to be shown only on the hands. And when I do that, basically I only show the glitchy animation. And then I just, uh, if you look here, so hands front, we don't have actually hands here, we only have the glitch animation. So what I'm basically doing, I'm hiding the hands and I'm using glitchy animation instead. Lastly, what I did, I added some wiggle effect to the whole composition. Basically, I grouped everything, added some wiggle effect. What this basically does, this is basically just moving the girl to the left and right. Here, as you can see, the girl's, uh, the camera is like shaking to the left and right. And uh, I did this basically by just adding some cool wiggling effect. And uh, lastly, if you look here, I also have here the camera. And the camera basically helps you to zoom in and zoom out on different objects. And that's how I basically zoomed in and zoom out. 
So it's almost almost if like there is a real cameraman going closer to the girl and then going further away. So again, if you didn't notice this uh, part, which is a very cool part, my dear friend Sidas, so here, and uh, just look at this. You see, uh, the cameraman started close up and then the cameraman is moving further away. Wow. And that's it for the animation. Obviously, I also added some uh, sound effects, you know, some cool glitchy sound effects, creepy sound effects, ocean sound effects, and so on. And uh, let's just look at the animation once more. Okay, you know, I'm really hungry actually. I didn't eat, I just woke up and I just started shooting the video. You see everything for you, my dear friend Sidas. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss my other cool tutorials. And I will go back to Narnia. Yeah, that's where I'm, in case you didn't know, I'm from Narnia. So, bye-bye. <sighs> I will miss you. <laughs>